Welcome back, everybody, to the Ozone Football Podcast. Rob Ogden and Tony Gerdeman here. Buckeyes were off last weekend. They get Illinois this weekend. What should we talk about today, Gerd? Uh, you want to talk about the weather? <laughs> It'd probably be more exciting than talking about Illinois. <laughs> it's, it's pretty cold out today. And snowy. Snowed? Yeah. Wow. It'll be a 65 on Monday, though, so i got something to look forward to this weekend. Anyway, BCS, we can talk about that. Yeah. Buckeyes move up to number three for the first time all season um, after Oregon goes down last Thursday night. Um, you know, we knew la- we knew that last weekend was going to be important to Ohio State in terms of potentially moving up in the standings, and it ended up uh, ended up being so. Oregon goes down. Um, what do you think about that game against Stanford? I was surprised by it just because I thought Stanford was pretty bad in that game against Utah. Yeah, and that's how I view Stanford. But I mean, they completely shut down Oregon. They beat them up, but they still almost blew it. Yeah, I actually turned the game off when it was. I think it was late in the, it was in the fourth quarter. I think it was still twenty six nothing. Yeah, and I felt solid final score the next morning. I was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> um, but Oregon's inability to stop the run, that was brutal. Oh yeah, it was it was hard to watch because they knew it was coming. You know, they'd put their guys there and they still couldn't stop. I mean, they get four or five yards, but when you know you've got ten guys in the box, you shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, I mean third and two, third and three, third and four. You might as well just reset the chains because yeah. they were going to run for the first down. Exactly. It was, it was comical. Either way, it works out well for Ohio State. Um, the question now becomes: Does Baylor have a chance at passing the Buckeyes because they absolutely obliterated mm-hmm. number ten in Oklahoma? Um, and people, you know, that were saying that was a kind of a put up or shut up game for them, and they definitely put up. Yeah, it took them a while to get started though. They started slowly. Yeah, and I think. People got a good look at Oklahoma, and they were not impressed. And I don't think anybody thinks that they were the number 10 team in the nation after seeing that game because it was ugly. But they definitely – same thing with what they did with Kansas State. Started slowly, but by the end, you know, they're putting points on them. They're moving the ball with, with ease. Yeah, this brings us back to the need for style points for the Buckeyes. Yeah. We've been talking about that a lot recently. And now with Baylor, as hot as they are, it seems like Ohio State is going to need some of those style points mm-hmm. to keep Baylor up. Because if they, if they go out and beat Illinois by, you know, a touchdown or two – on Saturday, yeah, would be they're going to get passed by Baylor, yep. assuming Baylor continues to win. Yeah, I mean, I think Baylor could go out and, and win by two touchdowns, and if Ohio State does the same thing, that's not good enough. You know, yeah. It's not good enough for Ohio State. Baylor can get by with it because they've got Texas Tech and they've got Oklahoma State. You know, and, and right. Texas Tech was ranked 25 last week. Oklahoma's in the top, Oklahoma State's in like the top 15 this week. Right. So they can get away with something like that. Ohio State really can't no, anymore. Not when you're playing Illinois. No. Um, but a couple of players admitted yesterday that, you know, they do need style points. I was surprised to hear Corey Lindsley talking the way he was last week when he was saying, uh, he basically said, Urban Meyer told us that if we beat Penn State 13 to 10 or whatever, we're going to get passed. Yeah. So we knew we had to basically demolish them. Yeah, and I think they talked more, even more about it yesterday where the players were saying, they weren't saying he's stressing necessarily style points, but playing great, you yeah. know, which is which is. Coach speak for style points, basically. Right. You know, right. they can't have any letdowns. You have to play great all the time, and as long as you're playing great all the time, the style points will come. Yeah, that's basically what Meyer said. He said we need to win and play well yeah. while we win, which basically means yeah. they need to put up some exactly. points. And that's some of the other players had similar, um, similar words. Um, but if it was up to Meyer, they wouldn't need the style points because they would be number two in the poll, which is where Meyer said yesterday he's voted. Ohio State in the coaches' mm-hmm. poll all season, actually. Yeah. Not just after Oregon's lost. Well, you know, they've gone undefeated. They haven't lost. So, you know, he hasn't seen, you know, a reason to drop themselves. And I think that would be the case for most coaches, unless they're trying to motivate yeah. a team. But I, it's a silly way to motivate them. No, it makes sense. Um, he has Alabama number one, Florida State number three. He couldn't remember who he had four and five. Mm-hmm. He knew it was some combination of Baylor and Stanford. Um, maybe he put Stanford ahead of Baylor. That, I think that's, <laughs> yeah, I think it was a selective forgetting, yeah, possibly. That's what I'm thinking. You know, but I mean, he, he has this issue with a lot of rules and things of that nature that he can't always recall them at the right, time. So just, this might be another one of those things. Yeah. But I think as far as not dropping him, you know, his team down, people point at the Wisconsin game, but he's been talking all year how the Badgers are going to be one of the best teams right. in the nation. We're still which, waiting for that to happen. Yeah. Well, I mean, they, they yeah. But I think he has to hold, yeah, hold that stance. That no doubt, no doubt. I mean, it makes sense by all means. But um, you know, if if we're, if we're ranking these teams right now, what's your top five? I've got to go. Hmm. I like Florida State better than Alabama, but I think those two are interchangeable. I mean, they're one A and one B. Yeah. Um, 
I go Ohio State three, Baylor four, and then Stanford five. And don't talk to me about Stanford moving ahead of any <laughs> undefeated team no, in a BCS conference. No, I agree with you. Um, before Saturday, I think for, I think Florida State has to be had to be number one because they're the only team. I mean, they blew out two top five right. opponents. Whether I mean, you can question the valid- validity of those teams when they're in the top five, but they were in the top five, right. and Florida State absolutely demolished both of them. Yeah, Clemson on their own on the Clemson's home turf. A, a far superior team to either, you know. For sure, Bama. Now they have this quality. They've got now the quality win against LSU. They beat Texas A and M earlier in the season, so there is a case of them being number one too. No, but I like you. Yeah, I'm I'm fine with Florida State there. I'm because- fine with Florida State number one as well. Um, I think you can make the case for Baylor at three. Mm-hmm. Personally, I would put Ohio State three and Baylor four, but I think it's close. I mean, I know I know Ohio State fans that might upset them, but Baylor. I mean, if you look at the schedules, is Ohio State's better than Baylor's at this point? I mean, you can argue that Oklahoma wasn't a worthy top ten team, but they were in the top ten. Right. Ohio I State mean, they were still a ranked opponent. opponent. Yeah. So I I don't have a problem either with that because I think it'll those two will shake out. They will. You know, I think a win over an eleven one Michigan State would be better than anything Baylor's going to put out there because they won't even have that extra game that Ohio State will. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, right now, people wanted Ohio State to win big like Baylor's doing, you know, and that's what Ohio State is doing now against the type of opponents that Baylor, you know, played early in the season. I mean, if you take the names off both teams, I think Mm -hmm. it's tough because, I mean, Ohio State, what's their best win? Wisconsin? Right. So that's what Wisconsin's ranked like. Are they top 20? I think they might be now. They're in that area. But Ohio State, I mean, it wasn't a convincing win. Right. It, was, it was a fair, I mean, it was a good well, win. What, it, what was it, 31? 31 to 24. But what, what was it at one point? It was like 31-17 or 31-10? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, so. But it was 31 to 24. And then Baylor plays Oklahoma, and they beat, I mean, what, they beat them by like 30 points? What was the final score of that game? Uh, something like it that. It was big. So yeah. I'm just, I mean, if, if Well, you, I mean, if we want, we can just go to the common opponent, which is Buffalo. And look, I mean, look, yeah. yeah. What Ohio State beat Buffalo 40 to 20. Mm-hmm. Buffler, and Baylor, Baylor beat him like, like 72 75 or something. Yeah. Zero. <laughs> so, you know, just basing everything like we do on yeah. Buffalo, the Buffalo standard, as we call the it. Buffalo standard, standard yeah. Um, not Stanford. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, I think there is a case for Baylor, is my point, at number three. Personally, I have Ohio State three, Baylor close behind at four. Well, I mean, when, oh, go finish with that, and I, I bet I know who your st- number five is. And number five is Stanford. I thought you were going to say Ohio. <laughs> but if if... You know, if you're trying to decide between three and four, I, you know, one way to do it is who do you think would win in that, that game? Right. So, I mean, how would you see it? It'd be a fun one. Yeah. It'd be a lot of points in that game. And, and the thing, I think Baylor's defense is something that, you know, is questioned at this point. How would they stack? I mean, Ohio State's defense hasn't been maybe up to Ohio State yeah. standards, but I think when you're matching them up against Baylor's defense, maybe that slows down Baylor's attack a little right. bit. But you, you, I feel like you could see Ohio State putting up a lot of points. Yeah, and Baylor. I, Baylor's defense played good against Oklahoma, but Oklahoma cannot throw the ball at all. Right. So, you know, yeah, you, Oklahoma, anybody, you can Oklahoma stop a running team. Terrible. Yeah. I mean, for a Bob Stoops, is that the worst you've ever seen a Bob Stoops oh, yeah. team play? Yeah, it was, it was horrific. They couldn't, I mean, any type of completion was, you know, a surprise. So, I yeah. think Ohio State would definitely pre- – Posed um, a more severe threat in all facets than anything Oklahoma could produce. If you're setting the line in that game, who are you favoring? Well, I mean, eh. Ohio State, Baylor. Yeah, I think you go with Ohio, Ohio State by you know what, maybe four. I yeah, know. I'd say probably even less. Because you know you're also going to have a better crowd. You know, Ohio State fans will travel. You could put that game in Dallas, and there's going to be more Ohio State fans than Baylor fans. Yeah. So. Anyway, I don't know, I'll, I'll, I'll ask my friend Danny Sheridan about that, and I'll get back to you next week. <laughs> um, I was going to go Ohio number five, but they don't they don't measure up against our Buffalo standard that we were talking that's about. That's true. That's true. Lots of Buffalo. Right. So. so what? Buffalo five? Buffalo might be five. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, before before this win over Oklahoma, I think that was Baylor's best win. That or Kansas State. Mm-hmm. So. Well, see, that doesn't say, that doesn't say very much about Baylor's schedule. Yeah. But um, is there a chance Ohio State could pass Alabama or Florida State? In the into the top two without one of those teams losing, say Ohio State goes out, demolishes their next three opponents or four opponents even, right? And you know Florida State struggles; they barely get by uh, Florida or, or Alabama, barely gets by Auburn, even though Auburn's a top ten team. Or I don't remember the well the other games on Bama schedules. Well, they got Alabama. Mississippi State this week. Don't they still have an F- FCS team? Yeah, like a Georgia State, I think. So 
Bama struggles with Georgia State. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But if you know, you get my point. If they struggle and still win, but don't win convincingly, yeah. is there a chance Ohio State could pass them? I think Alabama could win the rest of their games by one point and be fine because you know the SEC mistake. Yeah, I don't think Florida State could do that. Um, so I think if, if they held Florida State to the same standards that they held Ohio State when they dropped Ohio State, you know, Ohio State started too. They were down right. four. Right. So they, they, they dropped for, you know, some close wins over, at that time, quality opponents. I mean, I mean. Close wins over, well, it was a close win over Buffalo. I mean, it's a three-touchdown game. I mean, yeah, is that close? But, uh, yeah, I but they didn't cover. Well, that's true. But even still, I mean, if, if we're going to hold them to that standard, you know, mm-hmm. does, I, I don't see it happening, but I think, you know, why couldn't they jump Florida State if Florida State struggles and Ohio State continues to do what they're doing? But the problem is, I don't. Yeah, voters aren't aren't well, going to do reason that. Reason would tell you that it's possible, but then if you look at the BCS standings, there's a pretty big gap yeah. between the top two and Ohio State. And it would take, average. you know, it would they would have to drop Florida State. The voters would, and I just don't see them doing that because, you know, that's just not how it's done at this point. I just don't see that. I don't see that happening for Ohio State. Yeah, I mean, other than Ohio State, who is the easiest road to be going undefeated out out of those um, four four teams that we mentioned? Well, I mean. <sighs> I'm still not sold at Auburn because Auburn, you know, they can't always throw the ball very well. And I think Alabama will be able to stop a one-note team. Yeah. But, I mean, Florida State has Syracuse this week and Idaho and then at Florida. At Florida. I mean, and other then, than you know, maybe that at Florida, I don't – do you see – I mean, they're blown – I mean, 59-3 over Wake Forest last week. Not that Wake Forest is good, but that's the type of team they've got. Right. Yeah, I don't – I mean, they should beat Florida by, what, three touchdowns at least – yeah. So, and then you know the who they who would they have in the ACC championship game? Georgia Tech or Florida or Virginia Tech right now? And yeah. I think that gets decided. I think Ugh. don't those two teams play? Uh, I don't know. Georgia Tech plays Clemson this week. Man, but, that's you know. Yeah, I mean, I don't see Florida State losing. No, I don't either. You know, maybe Virginia Tech has a good defense, but I still haven't seen anybody you know like scare Jameis Winston or you know, no, anything like that. So. Yeah, like we said, Alabama's got Auburn. Auburn's like number seven now, right? Mm-hmm. Or something like that. They're in the top ten. What's Auburn's best win? Texas A&M? I think so. LSU. They did beat LSU 38-7. to seven. Or no, that was Alabama I'm looking at. Auburn. Yeah, they beat LSU. I don't remember the score of that game. Let's see. LSU. No, they lost to LSU. Okay, well, they you. lost. That's their one loss. At LSU, they lost 35-21. to 21. They beat Texas A&M 45-41. They beat Ole Miss thirty to twenty two. They've got Georgia this week, and Alabama. They might not get by Georgia this week. Yeah. Not that that matters for the purposes of beating Alabama, but it's a rivalry game. It's at Alabama mm-hmm. or it's at Auburn. I mean, it could happen. It could. I mean, if if Auburn is running the ball, then anything can happen. Yeah. You know, you throw a couple um, play action passes in there, and you've got an you know eighty yard strike. And is he, Missouri the best team to beat Alabama in the I, SEC? I think so because they'll spread it out. You know, they'll put pressure all over the field on Alabama. I think if you just focus, like, between the hashes, like, you know, maybe South Carolina would, then yeah. Alabama would just, you know, stifle them and smother them. At least Missouri has a ton of wide receivers. Alabama has issues in the secondary for an Alabama team. So, I, you know, the only question is, is it Matty Mock or is James Franklin right. back, you know? Right. It's all Matty Mock's high school team. Went for it on fourth down every time. Never, the only kicked onside kicks, didn't kick extra points, and never, we yeah, said they never punted. Yeah, that's awesome. That's incredible. <laughs> um, it's completely unsportsmanlike, but. Yeah, they lost. <laughs> it was in the we'll state title that. game. They lost. There you go. They deserved it. Um, but one, one Buckeye who doesn't think Ohio State would have any trouble with, all, or with Alabama or any of those teams is Evan Spencer. He said yesterday the Buckeyes would wipe the field with Alabama and whoever else. Um, is that the type of confidence you like to see out of your players, or maybe that is that little shades of DeAnthony Thomas last week saying they were going to hang 40 <laughs> on Stanford? I think it's always good to see the confidence like that. You know, it's just what is manufactured after that. But you, all players have confidence, Yeah. you know, and they should. It's just then it gets blown up. And who doesn't think they're going to win every game they play other than, right. you know, maybe some Bobcats? 
<laughs> I mean, the guys on last year's team still think they would have beat Alabama yeah. if they had played yeah. them in a national championship game. I mean, right. we've heard them say that. And it's easy to stay that confident when you don't have to do it. So. Right. <laughs> there is that. Um, but, you know, he said it He said it with a laugh. Yeah. Um, I feel like maybe it's been taken a little bit out of context. He was kind of joking when he said it. Um, you know, and he said this. He said more than one time, this is just my bias. Showing yeah, through. Exactly. I think he was just trying to portray confidence. Right. Not necessarily saying that realistically we actually would beat Alabama by, you know, 30 points or whatever. Yeah. No, and he said when I was over there, he said that Alabama has some, and, and Florida State I think at that time as well, said that they have some weaknesses that they think they would be able to exploit. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's not an overall weakness or this or that. They just have some things that they think they'd be able to get over on those yeah. two teams. Either way, it was a great quote. It was the kind mm-hmm. of stuff we love to hear from players, but unfortunately, we probably won't ever hear anything like that from him <laughs> ever again. Because he was, of course, reprimanded by the PR people. Right. Um, he sends out the apologetic tweets mm-hmm. last night saying, I didn't mean any disrespect. I was just trying to have some fun, you know. So I'm sure the... Then people got the media people got to him. But. I would like to see like an apology, like a literal apology, be like, you know, I didn't mean that we would, you know, actually literally wipe the field <laughs> with them. I would never do that to a player. Use them to wipe up a field. Fields are, you know, that's how you get staff infections. So I would never willingly, you know, inflict a staff infection upon, you, you know, the opponent. That yeah, you should have gone that route for sure. Plus, I hate to clean, <laughs> you know. Man. Anything else you want to talk about as far as the BCS? No, it, not at all. Not at all at all. BCS is talked about way too much. I cannot wait until next year. We could be talking about the playoffs right Man, now. 14, how good would that be? Baylor, Ohio State, Alabama, Florida State. There it is. Yeah, let's play. Exactly. Everything is settled. Man. We can talk about the Big Ten. Yeah, let's do it's that. It's not all settled in the Big Ten. No. Because Nebraska and Michigan State, they got a showdown coming up for the Legends Division. As this weekend, right? Yeah, against um, you know the best defense in the nation against a backup quarterback. Yeah, that who game is can't throw the ball at Nebraska, right? Right. Um, we saw Nebraska have their way with Michigan on Saturday, and Michigan is just—it's hard to watch. It is. <laughs> it's like Michigan just you know keeps running into a line, you know, into a wall. There's nothing there. And then eventually, you know, every other snap, that wall comes running back at them. Don't they learn? No. Don't they learn? They've been they're, doing this for weeks now. No, they're like the stupidest Pavlov's dogs <laughs> ever. They just keep hitting that buzzer, keep getting electrocuted, you know. it's They're so... You know how, like, in Jurassic Park, you know, the Velociraptors are testing the fences yeah. and they're getting smarter? Right. They keep Not touching that smarter. fence. Not you know, getting smarter no. at all. No. This keeps hurting. This keeps hurting. <laughs> anyway, Nebraska, Michigan State... Ohio State really wants Michigan State to win this game, convincingly. Yeah, definitely. No I mean, doubt about it. Michigan State's up to what? Like, are they top 15 now, or are they up to 17? Something right like now, that. No, number 16 in the BCS. 16, I was close. Um, yeah, so they're 16. If they can... I mean, Nebraska's a respected opponent. They're 7-2. and two. They beat Michigan. Um, if they can really clobber Nebraska, maybe, with their backup quarterback, maybe, you know, even shut them out. Yeah, I mean, I think the key is to leave no doubt. Yeah. You know, even, you know, I don't know how many points we expect Michigan State to put up. Though Nebraska's defense is terrible. Right. You know, you would know that by watching them against Michi- against Michigan. But, you know, everybody runs for 200 yards against them. You know, but maybe they have a, maybe it's maybe it's teams from Michigan that yeah, just, maybe. you know. I think maybe. they'll be fine against Nebraska. Especially the way they blitz, the way they attack a quarterback. And Tommy Armstrong, you know, before the Michigan game, threw three interceptions in his last two games. So I think it's going to be ugly. Do you have any idea on what what the line on that game is? No, I was going to ask you if you did. I was looking it up. It's going to take too long. What time is that game? It's at 3.30. It's a 3.30 game. Let's see. Either way, I mean, if if Michigan State can go out and win convincingly, that only helps Ohio State. I mean... As far as oh, it's okay, six and a half. Michigan State's giving six so and a half. figure. If they're going to win nothing, more than that, yeah, seven's not enough. No, might ten might be enough. Mm. <laughs> no, to get to cover, not to not to impress people. No, oh, to cover ten yeah. will be enough. If the line is six and a half. <laughs> I can tell you that for sure. Um, but no, that should be like a you know a twenty-eight nothing or you know maybe like a thirty-four-three something like that. If they can beat them like that. That'd be great yeah. for Ohio State. They'd sneak into the top fifteen. Maybe top twelve range, mm-hmm. and there's a quality win mm-hmm. that they don't have. You yeah. know, I mean, if Ohio State were to beat them, right? Game. Exactly, and you know, it's national TV. The entire 
anybody can watch it. You know, next week they go to what, Northwestern. You know, do the same thing to that Northwestern team, which which they should. Right. You know, so we'll see. Um, one other notable thing from yesterday on Wednesday, Meyer kind of. I mean, he vehemently denied that Fickle had interviewed for this Florida Atlantic <laughs> job. Um, and, and he probably was telling the truth, yeah. but now it comes out that Meyer actually has met with the Florida Atlantic AD, Pat Shun, who Ohio, he's, was at Ohio State? Yeah, he was in the administration, of which there are many. Okay, and so now he's the head guy at Florida Atlantic, mm -hmm. meets with Meyer. Meyer said they s discussed more than one name on his coaching staff specifically. Well, they talked about building a profile for a coach who could win there, and Meyer was asked if... You know, do any of your coaches fit that profile? And he said, yeah, you know, yeah a couple, you know. Okay, something. yeah. But he said they specifically spoke yeah. about. Right. I mean, was it just one or multiple? Well, see, that's where Meyer he, sort of yeah. pulled the plug, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so th he spoke about at least one assistant on his coaching staff. Um, so he, he did not name names, but that's what I'm going to ask you to do now. Uh, well, I think Luke Fickle is obvious. Everett Withers, you know, looked at what Southern Miss last year. Even though Urban Meyer asked everybody on the staff to give him two years, so yeah. Everett Withers is looking. Ed Warner has said he wants to be a head coach. Yeah. Um, Tom Herman will be a head coach. You know, if not this year, I th personally I think he should wait a year. Yeah, you know? I think Herman's the hottest name of yeah. all the guys. Just you know, because what the offense is going to do, and he's he's so young. Um, but he's an outstanding recruiter. Yeah. He's got a base in Texas. But as you mentioned, he's above that type of job. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I think right now he could have you know his pick of whatever Mac job is out there, but I think that's also beneath him because in a year he could have a BCS job on a level of like a Maryland BCS. or something yeah. of that nature. Yeah. You know, the thing I'm saying is I think Michigan should look at him once they get rid of Brady Hoke <laughs> because I think that would be just – it would be pretty – Amazing, yeah. and then you know. there'd be another ten-year war. Exactly. How awesome! Is that, you know, is that like, gonna happen? I mean, Hoke is he gone? You think? I think if they have another year like this year, next year, yeah. And if they lose out this year, and lose out, if and, they and lose our, out, they're gonna be, they're gonna be underdogs the rest of the season, because they go to Iowa after Northwestern, and they're not gonna be favored over Ohio State. So if they lose out, that's five in a row, six of seven. You know, you finish what two and two and six in a Big Ten. And what happens if you you know you lose your bowl game in Detroit or wherever? No, I, I, maybe maybe there'll be a. We, I mean, we were talking about Ohio. Maybe Ohio versus Michigan. Oh, would that be outstanding? Detroit. Oh, hope hope. <laughs> that would be fun, right? <laughs> no. that, oh. Boy, because Brady would be so confused. We could have podcast a daily podcast just about that. That would be fun. Let's hope for that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what what are they? They're six and three now, but. I mean, like you said, they're not going to be favored in any of these games. Mm -hmm. They might finish 6-6. Six and six. Yeah, I mean, with the new bowl um, groupings, I don't know what, Ohio, what what the bottom of the barrel of the Big Ten lines up as far as, you know, their pairings anymore yeah, because it's, you know, I, I don't necessarily go that worry about that far down when I'm looking at bowl. Well, not in a couple of years. Yeah, exactly. Not, not since. Not since 2011. Right. <laughs> um, but, yeah, Michigan, is just, it's just bad. Um, anything else? We don't need to talk about the Big Ten anymore, do we? No. Okay. But, you know, we were talking about, I think what, Luke what Fickle would be. About? Oh, right. The, yeah, the Florida Atlantic. Okay. I think Luke Fickle would be, you know, what they're looking at. But, you know, you wonder with him because he's looked at other jobs and sort of been passed over for like an Akron, you know, and things of that nature. So, I don't maybe he has to go lower than Akron. Akron passed him over? Well, I don't know that they necessarily passed him over. There were talks, but they ended up going with Terry Bowden. Okay. You know, he interviewed, I think, at Pitt. When they went with um, Chris. Didn't Fickle interview at Pitt? That's what, yeah. Oh, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were talking about Herman. Oh, no, no, not Herman. No, no. Got it. Fickle. But, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I think Fickle's probably the the guy that everyone's thinking about right. for that. I mean, I don't know. What's, what are your thoughts? Is Fickle as a head coach? We've seen him for a year. Yeah. Didn't work out so well, but, I mean, it was a bad situation. It was a bad situation. I mean, it wasn't his staff, you know. and Yeah. You got a freshman quarterback. No matter how dynamic he is with his legs, he was not dynamic with his arm or his head. You know, so it was, it wasn't a good situation. Um, I don't know what my opinion is of of Fickle. I, it's it's tough because it's hard to judge him based on that season. Yeah, but I mean, I know there's a lot of at least a lot of Ohio State fans who aren't don't think too highly of him as a defensive. Coach, right, and that, yeah, that's another thing. I don't think people would. There would be a lot of people who wouldn't see it as a loss if he took a job. Yeah. You would see it more of a loss if he took Mike Vrabel with him. 
Yeah. But you know, I don't, I don't think, it's, I don't is, see that happening. I mean, it was a tough situation in Ohio State, but going to Florida Atlantic, you don't think that's going to be a tough situation? How do you win there? I mean, why, exactly why do you? What, I mean, yeah, it's a great talent base, but nobody's been able to do anything there, and it's like, no. why take a job that is essentially unwinnable? Yeah, I mean, will you have the support of the athletic department? Will you have the financial support needed to win? Um, I mean, he's going to have to take it. I mean, he might get a raise a little bit, but his staff wouldn't. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if anything transpires with that. Yeah. Um, so we'll keep our eye on that. Um, just other notable things from yesterday. Taylor Decker is practicing. Yeah. He had the sprained MCL um, against Purdue two weeks ago, but he's good to go. Um, did we? I don't know if we talked about this. Meyer leaving him in the game. Did we talk about that last week? I we may have touched on it, but you know I, yeah. you know I don't necessarily have an issue with it, other than. You know, if they don't have anybody they can trust, you still have to protect your quarterback. Right. You know, but... Yeah. I mean, Braxton wasn't in the game at that point, but... You, you know, I mean, but... What, it was Kenny in there at that Kenny point? was... It was the third quarter. Uh, Decker was the yeah. only starting offensive lineman still in the game. Right. Uh, you know, I, it's unfortunate that they, do, that they don't have somebody that they can trust. I think they need to find somebody. Yeah. Yeah, because that was the thing he was saying. I mean, it was our travel roster. We literally had to play him because yeah. we were running out of bodies. Yeah, that's the other thing people don't really think about. You know, you, you're not with your full allotment of players. Right. Um, Curtis Grant, he sprained his ankle in that game. He also has a lower back injury. He did not practice yesterday. Meyer said he was hoping to return Tuesday. Mm-hmm. It appears that he'll be good to go Saturday. Same with Josh Perry, who had that um, finger surgery last season to correct, or last week, last Monday, to correct that uh, dislocated. I think it was his right pinky finger, um, but he said it doesn't bother him at all. Yeah. He had been playing through the pain for well, a while. I think, yeah, I think they'll be okay because they're not going to be playing probably any three linebackers and maybe not too much two linebacker sets. So, yeah, yeah, that's you know when the, when Grant or Perry both need to get a rest or something, yeah. you know, it won't be a problem. Yeah. Um, so yeah, moving on to Saturday's game, the Illini are three and six, zero oh and five in the Big Ten. They haven't won a Big Ten game since October eighth, two thousand and eleven. It's a long time. Yeah, that's back when we were thinking about, you know, all those lower bowls that we don't think about. You know, just think if back then, if Gene Smith was thinking, you know, I should just not let the Buckeyes go to a bowl game this year. Yeah, the Buckeyes could be defending national champs. Man, too bad he wasn't thinking what we were thinking. <laughs> um, they actually have a decent. He rarely is. I'll just say that <laughs> they actually have a decent passing game led by quarterback Nathan Shieldhouse. They're like 23rd in the nation, uh, but. Their defense is pretty pitiful. Yeah, they allow thirty-four point seven points per game, so it could there could be a lot of points on the board for the Buckeyes on Saturday. There should be. I think there should you know might be a defensive score here there here as well, because I'm yeah. you know they put they move the ball around they they score they do this they do that but against Michigan State they didn't do any of it. You mm-hmm. know they got destroyed they got beat up and yeah you know, I, I think Ohio State should do some of that. Yeah. I don't know that they'll hold them out of the end zone, but they should be able to control things. The line on the game is 33. Um, personally, I think that's a lock. I think everybody should go out and find their bookie <laughs> and put a lot of money on that game. A kidding, of course. Yeah. For entertainment purposes only. For entertainment purposes only. But 33 for real. I mean, Ohio State should I mean, potentially cover that by the half. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you know, it might be like 31 nothing or 31 7 or something like that at the half, but. Yeah. You know, the first score out of the second half should cover it. In fact, actually, the line went down. It opened at 33. It's 31 and a half now. Oh, so definitely go out. Right. I yeah. mean, that Find one two bookies. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I think they'll cover that. Your thoughts? Yeah. I, yeah. If definitely. they don't cover, I mean, you have to cover at this point. If they don't, it's because of, like, two late touchdowns or something like that when, you know, you've got the second team in and, you know, something of that nature. We talked about the second team against Purdue, though. I mean, I don't, and the second team. Is, well, Purdue just can't do anything offensively. So, I mean, even true. even Illinois can do stuff against air. That's Purdue true. can't. I don't think the second team offense would have much problem scoring on the no. Illini defense. No, though. definitely not. Um, this is a Illinois team that two years ago, Ohio State went in and won that, beat them at Illinois with one pass completion from Braxton Miller. Uh, I don't think we'll see that again today or Saturday. But it was funny that Meyer said yesterday that. You know, they went in there and won with a, with a, a young freshman quarterback and an right. incompetent group of wide receivers, <laughs> I think is how he termed it. Um, but it should be a, there should be a lot more uh, action through the air for the I, Yeah, I Saturday. think Braxton threw the ball four times in that game. He should have four passes in the first four snaps, I would think, in this game. Yeah. I mean, they'll throw the ball 
unless you know the weather won't allow but I, they'll throw the ball all over the place because they know they won't need to throw it or won't have to throw it in the second half yeah definitely um it should be a fun one at least from an offensive standpoint if you're a fan of Ohio State otherwise it's not going to be a fun one um we'll see if the weather holds up Myers Meyer made a big deal about that yesterday talking mm-hmm. about how they scout out the weather every weekend yeah it was interesting I mean I, I completely agree with them doing it in this game but is it just you know a note that you don't ever really hear about yeah. you know when Jim Tressel got here he had studies done on like the wind patterns in the stadium for punting purposes wow so I mean that's pretty serious yeah for real I mean you know how he loved his punting mm-hmm. but um like you said if the if the weather does get bad just pound the ball with Carlos Hyde and yeah. what are you gonna do I mean Take what, take what the weather gives you. Yeah, I mean, there should be 56 points on the board, you know, regardless, yeah. you know, by the fourth quarter. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's all I've got unless you want to add anything else. No, I don't like adding. You don't like adding. All right, we will move on to basketball, and we'll have fun with this one this weekend. And until then, peace out. Indeed.